Are you still unsure about taking singing lessons? Well, don't be. By the end of today's video, classical singing lesson for beginners, you'll have the tools that you need to become a better singer than you ever imagined possible. People often ask me why I teach a classical technique and the answer is really simple. Learning a classical technique gives you the widest range of opportunities at the highest level of skill execution. So you'll, you'll be able to sing any genre you choose and not be limited to just one or two genres. In this video, we're going to cover posture and breathing. We're going to cover warm up exercises and technical exercises. And I tend to use exercises which cover both things. So I'm all about killing two birds with one stone where we can. We're going to cover working out what your range is and possibly what your voice type is. We'll talk more about all of these things a little bit later. We're going to sing a little bit of a song and I'm going to show you um, how you will take that song and break it down into sections for your own practice. First things first, posture. If you need to sit for your singing lesson, that's absolutely fine, but make sure you're sitting on a hard chair. And if you can, sit towards the front of the chair with your feet both firmly on the floor. If you need a little bit more back support, you can sit further back in the chair, but again, it's really important that your feet are firmly on the floor. And that's so that your um, belly and diaphragm and abdominals can, can all move freely. If you're standing, I want you to stand with your heels underneath your hips. Stand up tall through the spine. So you're imagining all the vertebrae separating in your spine. And then just feel like you're being stretched up from this point here, um, like the skeleton in the science lab, and chin parallel with the floor. Then give your shoulders a roll and let your hands drop to your sides. And you're in the perfect posture for singing. For the breathing, I want you to put your hands on your tummy here. So thumbs at waist height. Um, and then with your um, first fingers not quite meeting um, and the little fingers splayed out. So your hands are stretched out. And then I want you to just, before you do anything else, squeeze your pelvic floor muscles. Now, these are the muscles, I'm going to be a little bit biological here, the ones that you scrunch up when you need to stop yourself from peeing. Um, so if you can just scrunch those muscles up, like you're trying to stop yourself from having a pee, and really feel how tight that feels, and then release them. And it's the release that's really important. Your pelvic floor muscles need to be really, really loose for good breathing because they actually need to move downwards as you breathe in. So your first breath is going to be a sucky, sucky breath like this. And you're directing that breath all the way down to those pelvic floor muscles. And you'll feel your hands just opening up and moving because the diaphragm is moving down and outwards and all the organs underneath the diaphragm are moving down and outwards and your pelvic floor muscles are moving downwards as well. So I've still got room for more air to go in. By which point you'll feel like a balloon about to float away and then you can let the breath out. And now we're going to warm your voice up. Now, this is a really important stage. You should never go into full singing without warming your voice up. It's all just a series of muscles um, and you wouldn't run a marathon without warming your, your muscles up. So really, really important stage. And the exercises that I tend to give um, also have a technical purpose as well. So yes, they're warming your voice up, but they'll have some technical reason for doing them too. So the first thing that we normally start with is just some humming. Um, and this gets your voice focused into this frontal area, which we call the mask. So first exercise, slow breath. <laughs> pelvic floor muscles. Can you feel 
feel it buzzing in your face. Wrinkle your nose. Can you feel that buzz yet? We'll carry on up the full scale with those um, humming exercises and then we'll repeat that with some actual vocalizing and we're going to use v, 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 and this is about using that focused frontal sound that we got going with the hum and then finding the ah space which is a huge space when your mouth is wide open like yawning and that's your best resonating space. So it's exactly the same tune that you've just done, but this time we're doing va 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 on every note. So here we go, yawn the breath in, feel that pelvic floor move down, and va 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 Drop your jaw for everyone. Va 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 Drop the jaw for everyone low breath low breath and again in a lesson we'll continue up the full range of your voice and then we'll talk about whether you can roll your R's whether you can make this sound and if you can't, we'll do a v instead, which involves top teeth on your bottom lip, v like racing cars. Um, I'll do a mixture of both. If you can roll your R's, that's the one you're going to do. And this exercise is all about getting your airflow right for your vocal cords. So we start with long, low breath, thinking about the pelvic floor, and we're going to do so just sliding up and down that fifth. Again, we'll continue that up your full vocal range until you run out of notes at the top. And then finally, what we'll do to get the voice going, this is a really important exercise, sirens. So we'll do um, just a low siren in your voice. Ooh. So just one of those kind of noises that doesn't really quite get off the ground. It's like a warm up siren for the one that's gonna come and be a bit bigger later on. So a long low breath every time. And then, ooh. And then we'll try a bigger one. Ooh. All the way down. And then we'll try one that goes up, up, up a third time. Here we go. Ooh. And again, all the way to the bottom until you run out of notes and put a tickle. Um, so those exercises are all about getting your voice working, but getting your resonance focused forward getting your breath flow working properly for your vocal cords, getting into the habit of thinking about getting the breath low into the body and getting the pelvic floor muscles working, um, and also exploring your range, which is what we're going to come on to next, 
through the sirens. The sirens help with vocal resonance and forward placement also, um, but also it's a playful way of playing with your range without actually thinking that you have to pitch specific notes and aim for specific notes. And it just gives me an idea of how versatile your voice is at this um, starting point in your singing. Now you may have heard about all the different voice types. So we've got sopranos at the top, mezzos, and then um, in the male voices, we've got tenors, baritones, and basses. So starting at the top, going down to the bottom. Um, this is something that you don't really need to worry about at this stage. Um, it's a good idea for me to get an idea of your range. That doesn't necessarily um, tell me whether you're a soprano or a mezzo or tenor bass or whatever. Um, working out your range is more about, um, it's like a, a before and after photograph. Most people have their first lesson and their range is really, really small. And often students will say to me after six months or so, oh my goodness, do you remember when I first came and I could only sing five notes? Um, and now I can sing 12 notes or I, now I can sing two octaves. Your range is um, all about um, being able to keep track really of how your voice is developing. So the first thing that I do um, during this section is we'll just play around with some notes and I'll ask you to sing them back. So I'm going to play a note and I want you to hear that note. And then as I sing the note, I want you to be preparing to sing it back for me. So all these pitches are just random. I don't want you to think too much about it. Don't overthink it, just go with the flow. And you might miss some and it doesn't matter. It's not a test. That's the really important thing for you to remember. Singing is all about coordination and some people actually really struggle with coordination. So here we go, let's give this a go. So. Playing it first, then I'm gonna sing it. La, sing it back for me, don't think about it. Go. La, go. La, go. La, go. La, go. really high one. La, go! That gives me lots of information about how your voice works, how you process sound and how you, um, how you perceive whether your voice is a high voice or a low voice. Often we think our voice is a low voice and it turns out that it can be quite a high voice. So that exercise gives me the information that I need to work out whether I think you're probably a soprano or a mezzo or a tenor or a baritone or a bass. Now, this is the point in the lesson where I'm going to ask you to sing something for me. So this is a song that I'd like you to choose. Um, something that you love it can be anything at all. It can be just something that you were singing on the way you know, to, to have your singing lesson in the car, whatever's floating around in your brain. Now, funnily enough, a lot of people draw a complete blank here. I think they just go into rabbit in the headlights mode. So I sometimes suggest something just to get the ball rolling. And one song that everybody seems to know, even if they don't really know the words, is Somewhere Over the Rainbow. So we quite often do that but it can be anything, it can be anything you want it to be. So if you have what you think is a reasonably high voice, this is gonna be your starting note. Somewhere. If you think you're a lower voice, this is going to be your starting note. Somewhere. Now I'm going to do it in that higher key. 
so you might um, want to switch off the sound at this point because it will put you off if I'm singing it in the higher key but I want you to just sing as much of Somewhere Over the Rainbow as you know of the chorus and I'll probably muck up the words because I haven't got them in front of me and it really doesn't matter just la la if you run out of words here we go Somewhere over the rainbow Way up high There's a land that I dreamed of Once in a lullaby And that's actually enough for us to um, find a few things to work on. So what we're going to do, we're just going to break it down into two phrases. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. So let's just look at that first part. Somewhere. It's a big jump. So you have to have really good breath support for this first phrase. So really focus on how you take that breath. Now you can sing. Somewhere over the rainbow. New breath. Way up high. Now just practice that. Just do it once on your own without me singing with you. Taking the breath in the right place. Now, what we're going to add into that is thinking about what the important words are. So, is it somewhere over the rainbow? Definitely not. Somewhere over the rainbow is our first phrase. So, some and rain are our important words. Long, low breath. Somewhere. New breath. What are our important words? Way up high. Way up high. So already we've put together how and where to take the breaths and what the important words are. And that gives our phrases a structure. And then the next phrase there's a land that I dreamed of. Again, it's about taking a low, low breath in and thinking about what the important words are. There's a land that I dreamed of. Land and dreamed, I think. There's a land that I dreamed of. Long, low breath. Once in a lullaby. And in that last section, once is your important word. Um, so what we'll do now is I'll ask you to sing that again, thinking about how you take those long, long, low breaths and emphasizing your important words. Practicing. Um, a lot of us don't really quite know how to practice, especially if we're new to singing lessons. So I would say if you, as a starting point, if you um, set aside 20 minutes a day, five days a week, you can have breaks in between those days or you can have your two days off together, just whatever works for you. Um, and just focus on spending some time on working on all of those things, the breathing, the posture, um, the sirening exercises, the warm-up technical exercises that we did, and then um, looking at your song and just breaking it down into sections. Hopefully you're already feeling a little bit more confident about what the possibilities are with your own voice and where beginner singing lessons um, with a classical technique can actually help to take you in the future. 
I'm sure there are things that I've missed in this video because of the time constraints, trying to get a lot of information into a very small space of time. Um, so please um, feel free to reach out and ask me any questions. So if you've got any questions at all, um, just flip me a message, put it in the comments. Um, I'm always happy to talk about singing with you guys, as you know. Um, and in return, if you could um, give me a thumbs up, like and subscribe to the channel, um, that really helps me out too.